Hi everyone and welcome to my series where I take a look at classic video games I haven't had a chance to play before. In today's episode I would like to invite you to the world of an amazing action-adventure game Beyond Good and Evil. When the game originally came out in 2003 it was praised by both gamers and critics, but at this point it's been 20 years since the release and the game's standards changed a lot. So in this video we will explore how this game plays today for the first time and was it able to stand the ultimate test of time. I will be covering the whole game from start to finish, so a spoiler alert just in case. Let's begin. The war has arrived at the gates of Hillis. This peaceful mining planet in System 4 is now completely encircled by the Dom's Armada. General Keck, Supreme Commander of the Alpha Forces, would like to take this opportunity to address a final message to the population. Loyal Hillians, the impending battle will be a difficult one, but thanks to the Alpha Section... Welcome to the planet of Hillis. The world inhabited by many different species where anthropomorphic animal hybrids coexist with humans. The game starts with a peaceful scene presenting the main protagonist of this story, Jade. However, peace doesn't last long as we find ourselves being attacked by Doms, an alien force whose goal is to abduct citizens of Hillis and drain their life force for power or turn them into slaves. Jade is taking care of the war orphans and when the attack happens, she tries to enable the shield to protect the orphanage, but it turns out that there's not enough funds to pay for electricity. Your optima account is 350 units short. Your electrical supply has just been blocked. Gotta be joking! Thank you, thank you for Dom's attacks the lighthouse where the orphanage is located with a meteor shower and numerous Dom's creatures land and try to abduct children, so it's time for us to get into the first battle of the game. The battle system is quite straightforward. You can either hit enemies with simple combos or dodge incoming attacks. The majority of enemies in this game have charging animations so you know when to dodge, but also hitting an enemy at this time will stagger them, cancelling the charge and allowing you to deliver several attacks in a row. After successfully beating the group of abductors, Jade is grabbed by some sort of a tentacle and dragged down into the cave. The big creature starts to speak with Jade in a foreign language and after it mentions the name Shoni, she experiences some strange visions before seemingly losing consciousness. At this moment, her uncle Paige comes to the rescue. He throws Jade her staff and we have our first boss fight of the game. The battle is relatively easy. When the boss spawns skeleton spikes, we need to charge the stuff to unleash a powerful attack that destroys spikes and staggers the boss. After hitting its eye a couple times, it spawns a set of adds that we quickly dispose of. The boss also casts laser attacks, which we can evade simply by running away. After beating the boss, it drops a pearl, a currency that we will use to buy upgrades for our ship later in the game. The Alpha Section forces that are supposed to protect people of Helis arrive quite late and after a short cutscene where Paige is calling them useless, they leave and Jade passes out. She recovers shortly after, but is quite saddened that they have no money to pay for the energy. Thankfully, Jade's holographic AI assistant Secundo appears and informs that the Science Center wants to catalog all the species living on Helis and needs photos to complete the catalog. They are ready to pay generously for each photo, so Jade accepts the job. At this point we receive a camera, the most important tool in the game. To get a picture, we just need to aim our camera, set the focus properly and take a photo. 
After adding several species to the catalog, the power to the shield is restored. Now we can explore the lighthouse a little bit, take photos of residents for additional funds, and find a physiological accelerator, an item that increases Jade's energy gauge, which acts as a health bar for a character. To heal up, we can use one of two types of items available in the game, Starcos, that recover one heart, or a box of K-Pups, which recovers all the energy. We arrive at the Pages workshop, and he informs us that we have received an M-Disc. This type of item contains messages from other characters and organizations, or some other important information. We can read those discs using M-Disc Decryptor, which also acts as a save point. When we read this M-Disc, we get an invitation for a job from mysterious Mr. De Castellac. He doesn't provide any details and suggests that Jade meets him in person on Black Isle. To get there, we need to use a hovercraft, but before jumping in, we find two new items. Boost capsule, which increases our hovercraft speed for a short period of time, and POD, which recovers one range of ship's durability. Also, at this point we have finished our first camera roll, and we are awarded with zoom for our camera. From that point, once we finish a camera roll, we will receive a pearl and a special M-Disc when we capture pictures of every single animal. Anyway, after we push the emergency generator to recharge the hovercraft, we are ready to depart to the Black Isle. However, once we get out into the open waters, the hovercraft breaks, leaving Jade and Paige stranded in the middle of the ocean. Thankfully, the Mamago garage is pretty close and they sent a tow ship to rescue us. This is the shop where we exchange pearls for hovercraft upgrades. It seems like the motor has broken, so we need to purchase a new one. It costs only one pearl, so there's no problem with getting it, as we still have a pearl from the first boss. In the garage, we can also purchase a bunch of items, including a mecha impulsor that increases the durability of our hovercraft, though at this point I have decided not to buy it, as we're still low on units. Now we're ready to continue our journey to the Black Isle, and surely there's nothing that can stop us from reaching our destination. Here we have to fight a Dom's Sea Serpent, and I would like to take a moment to talk about the version of the game I am playing. Beyond Good and Evil came out on numerous platforms, PC, PS2, GameCube, Xbox, and it was also remastered in HD for PS3 and Xbox 360. As you may have already guessed by looking at the interface, I am playing the PC version, which is not without its issues. For example, to run the game in widescreen, you need to install a fan-made patch, as without it you would have black borders around the game's screen. There are also issues with certain settings that may cause audio and video to desync, but it's all easily fixable. Ultimately, the only problem I have with the PC version is that it doesn't have controller support. The only way to play it is with keyboard and mouse. Of course, there's an option to bind the keyboard onto the controller using special software, but I decided against it. And my biggest struggle with controls was with hovercraft, as I wasn't quite sure how to turn it properly. I was trying to use both directional keys as well as the mouse, but it didn't really work and I even died a couple of times to Sea Serpent. In the end, the best way to handle it was to use only the mouse and avoid pressing A or D at all costs. With that approach, I was able to kill this mini-boss without any problems, as the fight just requires you to dodge the attacks and mines, and hit the enemy several times until it falls apart. Now nothing stops us from continuing our journey, for real this time. And after passing through the city, we finally arrive at the Black Isle. Here we meet Mr. De Castellac's representative, 
and he informs us that there are a couple dumb creatures hiding in the cave, but his employer requires a photo with both male and female creatures on the same picture. That's where Jade comes in. As we proceed deeper into the cave, we find the locked door that can be opened by standing on both buttons at the same time. As Jade, we step onto one of the buttons and command Paige to stand on the second one. After that, Paige presents us his latest invention, the jet boots that allow him to boost into the air with quite limited success. Here we have the first of many puzzles of the game. We need to stand on one of the platforms and command Paige to jump on another one, launching Jade to the upper level. Now we can lower the bridge so Paige could proceed as well. Here we find a map. Pretty much every location in the game has a map that we can photograph and analyze to get a layout of the area. Now our path is blocked with some boxes. To get rid of them, we have to command Paige to use a special ability that will force a balloon creature to come out of their holes so we can shoot them in the direction of the boxes, breaking them and unblocking the path. Here if we hit a creature, it will drop materia crystals, which are instantly converted into units. Those crystals are quite common and can be found in boxes or crystal formations throughout the game and most of the enemies drop them as well. After a few puzzles and fights we find a cutting hammer, a tool that Paige can use to cut through metal grids. Several fights later we arrive at the point where we can take a requested picture. Yeah, it turns out those weren't two small creatures, but rather one large monster. When the boss appears from one of the holes, we need to use Paige's ability to stagger it and hit it several times with our staff. The boss can also fly above the arena and exhale toxic gas that we should avoid by running away from it. At certain points, the boss will spawn some ads, but overall the fight isn't challenging. After we beat the boss and collect the precious pearl, the representative appears and tells us that Mr. de Castellac actually never existed. I think I owe you some explanations, Miss Jade. Miss Jade, you have brilliantly succeeded your situation test. Situation test? Yes. Please forgive this little charade. My name is Han. I'm a member of the Iris Network. The Iris Network? The rebel organization? Yes, the rebellion. Fighting against a threat that no one knows exists. If nothing is done, the entire population will be destroyed. With the help of the Alpha Sections, we can push back the Doms. The Alpha Sections are not exactly what you believe them to be. They capture ten people for every one that they save. The Alpha Sections have been defending us for years. They take care of the wounded, push back the Dom's attacks. That's exactly how they cloud your suspicions and gain your confidence. They suck the lifeblood out of our planet exactly as they've done to hundreds of others. The Hillian government didn't have the time to react. They were completely overtaken. But we can stop the Alpha Sections. How exactly do you propose we do that? They are completely aware that an uprising of the population would spell catastrophe. Bring the proof of this conspiracy to the people, and victory will be ours. More than ever, Jade, the Iris Network needs people like you. Help us fight the good fight. If you decide to join us, rendezvous at the Akuda Bar. Ask for peepers. We travel to Akuda Bar, located in the pedestrian district of Hillis City. 
here we need to get access to Iris Network Headquarters and to get a pass we have to play a coconut shell minigame. We are rewarded with a ticket and we see a code that we need to enter to unlock room 3. In the headquarters, we learn more information about DOMS and Alpha Section's trafficking operation and get a mission to infiltrate the Nutrapil's factory in order to take photographic evidence of the tortured victims, the Alpha Section's involvement in kidnapping and also find Iris agent Double H who went missing during the investigation. Before leaving, Han tells Jade that she would need a code name and she chooses Shawnee. When we try to approach the factory entrance, we find out that it's guarded by the Alpha Section's drone. At the moment we can't do anything about it, so we have to purchase a neutralizing cannon from Mamago Garage. It costs 5 pearls, however at this moment we only have 4, so we need to find 1 pearl somewhere. Thankfully, there are many ways to acquire pearls in this game and we just purchase one in the pedestrian district. But before going back, I decided to explore the city a little bit. In one of the houses, there is a hidden path that leads to a transit location. Here we find a big room full of conveyors. The reward for going through this room is another pearl. Now we can visit Mintsu's shop and here we can purchase an additional pearl as well as two important items, pearl detector and animal detector. Those tools allow us to see locations of pearls and animals on our map. In a Kuda bar we can also talk to Francis who's inviting us to play a pallet minigame. The rules are simple, you need to shoot all of the pallets from your side to your opponent's side. Whoever clears their side wins. Here we can get another pearl by betting a thousand units and winning the game. Now it's time to visit Mamago Garage and get us a neutralizing cannon. Once we get out, Dom's attacks once again, though this time we don't need to find anything, just dodge meteors. As we've got the cannon, we can now shoot a drone that has been blocking our path earlier and we arrive at the factory entrance. In order to get inside, we need to scan a barcode and the governor will send us a code to a door. Here our path is blocked with an electrical barrier and we have to move a box to bypass it. We ride the service elevator while Paige is staying behind. And proceeding further we find Iris Agent Double H trapped in the Dom's torture machine. To rescue him we need to get a picture of this machine as a proof and then scan a barcode nearby to get a gyro disc launcher. With this tool we can now shoot discs into remote targets aiming with our camera. We free Double H from the machine but it seems like due to the extensive torture he partially lost his memory. Thankfully he can operate even in this state and helps us to proceed further. Once we reunite with Paige, we encounter Reaper. This is the next boss fight. When it's on the ground, we shouldn't come close as it will deliver a powerful melee attack. Once Reaper jumps onto the platform, it starts to shoot green acid balls and we just need to dodge it. Then it will jump off and try to stomp us, though it's very trivial to evade. All we need to do is to shoot its eye with gyro discs and attack when it's staggered. Upon our victory, Reaper falls down into the water, dropping a pearl. We will pick it up later. Now we need to get a fuse to fix an elevator, but when we find one, we can't take it as we have to turn off the power first. We find a triangle keycard guarded by a monster. This key will not only allow us to turn off the power here, but will also be useful throughout the game. We fixed the elevator and we are ready to proceed to the upper floor. Here, here Paige is giving Jade an M-disc, 
We will check what's on it later when we have access to the decryptor. After that, Jade goes to scout the X-ray verification room alone. But when she returns, Uncle Page is being assaulted by Alpha Section soldiers. As we reach M-Disk Decryptor, we can check an M-Disk page gave Jade earlier. Jade, you inherited generosity and courage from your parents. You know, I think about them a lot. We were very close friends. Twenty years ago, we were forced to separate because we were all having some major problems with the authorities. Your parents put you under my care to save your life. We came to Hillis. Back then, it was a peaceful planet. I had hoped to raise you there safely. But the conflict spread. Now, you must know something. If I was able to get here, it was thanks to the Beluga, the spaceship that I designed and built with your father. It still exists, but I haven't exactly finished getting it back in top shape. You'll find the checkup report on my desk. The Beluga is at our place. You have to enter a code into each one of the consoles to open the secret hiding place. I can't say any more on this M-Disc about it, but I hope this information will be useful to you if, one day, you have to use the Beluga. No matter what happens, good luck, Jade. Uncle Page. We proceed with searching for Paige and find proof of the Alpha Section's kidnapping operation. From now on, we will encounter many Alpha Section soldiers, and there are several different ways to deal with them. We can either just scroll past them, sneak up behind and hit their air tanks, or just fight them. Though, the latter isn't the best approach, especially encountering several guards simultaneously. After some time, I managed to find a proper strategy against the guards. We need to wait for their attack, then dodge to the side, and as their shield is lowered, we can deliver several hits. There is also another way of dealing with them. We can shoot their air tanks from afar, and as they become disoriented, other guards will try to help and fix the damaged air tank. At this moment, we can attack the second guard and quickly dispose of them both. We take the third and final photo of this mission, capturing the image of the guard without a helmet, which is a definitive proof nice of the Alpha point. sections we'll working with the DOMs. The... Before leaving, we find a square keycard, which unlocks a way out. We find Paige's jet boots, and after that we get into the loading dock. Here we see Paige being taken away, and at the moment we are unable to help him. Spirit Eater appears and fuses the guard with machinery, creating a final boss of this level. Frankly, this is the easiest fight of the whole game. All we need to do is to hit one leg with a staff and command Double H to hit the other one. After that, we hit a core with gyro discs, repeat it a couple times, and the boss is defeated. As we leave the factory, it turns out that Double H was infected with a spore and we need to get him to Iris headquarters to eject him with a serum. Hey, quick! We're losing him! I'm here, Hub. You're gonna be alright. Hang on, it's almost over. Thanks to you, Jade, Hub is safe. We know that Paige is being taken away to the slaughterhouse, and the only way to get there is through one of the races. 
However, first we visit Mamago Garage and purchase an upgrade for our hovercraft, allowing it to jump over obstacles. Races in Beyond Good and Evil are another side activity. There are a total of four of them, each awarding a pearl upon first victory. It's not very challenging and you can also shoot your opponents, briefly slowing them down. Anyway, to get to the slaughterhouse, we need to enter the third race and jump into a secret entrance. Here we need to destroy some drones blocking our way and our weapons are useless against them. So what we need to do is to bait a torpedo from a flying machine so it would hit and destroy the drone. Slaughterhouse is probably the longest level of the game, but I will cover it very briefly. Here we have several encounters with guards that can't be fought in the open manner, as once one of the enemies detects us, we will be immediately killed by a turret. A nice thing about this game is that it features autosaves quite prominently. If you are defeated, you won't need to start from the last save point, so dying is not that big of a deal. Our goal here, aside from saving page, is to get three pictures of Alpha Section's operations to publish them so the residents of Hillis would learn the truth. The first picture shows captured victims transit process, the second one is a photo of some domes creatures inside tubes. Finally, the third one shows how a person floats through a tube. Once we get all three pictures, Jade and Double H decide to return to the headquarters as they are unable to locate Paige at the moment. Before getting to the Akuda bar, we fight another sea serpent, but this one is not different from our first encounter with this creature. In the headquarters, we meet the governor who was helping us during our journey. She thanks us for our contribution to the cause and gifts us a star key, which unlocks one of the optional areas within the city. At this moment we receive a message from the Iris leader Wild Boar, who turns out to be none other than Paige. Wild Boar calling Iris! Wild Boar calling Iris! Hey, that's my uncle! Paige! Your uncle? Our chief? He communicates with you by radio. Security measure. Until now nobody knew his real identity. Paige! Is that you? He can't hear you, Jade. Quiet, everyone. You'll call back. Don't make a sound. Wild Boar calling Iris. I don't have much time. They're everywhere. They've taken me to the moon. Here are my instructions. Get this message to Jade, your new reporter. Read the M disk that I gave you and find the ship. Read the M disk and find the. They're coming! Now our mission is to fight the Luga, a ship that will deliver us onto the moon. On the page's jet boats that we picked up earlier, we find two codes that we need to enter into the consoles, one within the lighthouse and another in page's workshop. So we finally found Beluga, but it turns out it's missing a flight stabilizer and a stellar motor. We go to Mamago Garage once again and purchase a stabilizer, but once we head out, we see that Alpha Sections has destroyed the lighthouse. We rush back to check on the kids, but they've already been captured. Jade is very disturbed by this situation and starts blaming herself and losing the will to fight. However, Double H assures her that the kids and Paige can still be safe. It's over, Double H. Finished. They're still alive, Miss Jade. Paige, the kids, they're all still alive. His speech helps, and we proceed to fix the that ship. Do it. The ship is now in full working order. I'm to take a test flight.
now we finally can fly. We fight another sea serpent and all we need now to get to the moon is to buy a stellar motor. Unfortunately at this point we are missing some pearls so it's time for some more side activities. There are 88 pearls in total but you don't need to get them all unless you're going for 100% completion. Like I've mentioned before, there are numerous different ways to get pearls. You can compete in races, you can purchase them from vendors, complete looter's caverns, which is basically a time trial race, and you can explore optional areas. The easiest way to get missing pearls, in my opinion, is to visit the volcano. Here you can find 15 pearls by beating Kroshak's enemies. Now we can finally afford a stellar motor, but before departing from Helis, I want to mention a couple hidden minigames. If you get all 88 pearls, you will receive an M disc with the game Yo Pearl, where you need to keep control of two pearls that move through an obstacle course. I found this game quite challenging, as it was difficult for me to keep track of both pearls simultaneously. There is also one special M-Disc that contains a copy of the palette game we used to play against Francis, but in this version it's possible to customize settings as well as to play against your friend. Here's how to get it. Every game save has a unique internet code. This code should be used on a special website called The Darkroom. The problem is that this website has been down for several years now, but thanks to the fans of the game, there are alternative websites where you can enter an internet code and receive a code that unlocks the box in a CUDA bar containing the M-Disc. Anyway, now it's time for us to travel to the final area of the game, the Moon Ceiling. Once we ascend into the dome's base, we are presented with a puzzle. To proceed further, we need to turn columns with a mirror on top of them to reflect the beam of light to the correct direction. In the next area, we find Paige trapped in the middle of the room behind the barriers that can be removed by solving another set of beam puzzles. Paige! Paige! Can you hear me? It's me, Jane! After solving the puzzle and opening our way to the center of the room, we order Double H to open the orange cocoon around Paige, but it seems like we are too late. I'll come back for you. I'll bring you back home. But it's no time for grief and we proceed deeper into the dome's base. Here we observe a meeting between the Alpha Section's General and High Priest of Doms and take a picture. Now we need to get to the transmitter to send this photo to Hillis for every citizen to see. On our way back, we receive a message from Iris that Sean Paige is alive. We just got an email from the chief. He's alive, Jade, alive. He tells Jade that it was a power that resides within her that brought him back to life. I know, but you saved me. You're the one that brought me back to life. You're not the one you think you are, Jade. There's always been a prodigious energy hidden deep inside you. Now it's coming to the surface, and you're starting to understand it. We make our way into the transmission room, but the access is blocked. Data not recognized. Protected system. Locking. 10. They're blocking the controls. 9. 8. No 
Segundo appears, saves the day and broadcasts the message to Hillis. Segundo el Magnifico is going to show you who is the best. Amigos, señores, señoras, y of course, señoritas, keep open your eyes, earthy tutti quanti. I no going to be wasting your time with big speeches. I just wanting to show you the whole big picture. Los Alpha Section are traitors, banditos, impostors, rascals, wooden nickels. Look at these photos that we have taken. The Alpha Sections are the accomplices of the Dom's forces. The Alpha Sections are the ones who've been kidnapping the Hillians and taking them to the Dom's. Once the victims arrive on the moon, they're drained of all their energy and die. Since the beginning, we have been manipulated and deceived. Stop listening to the lies that the Alpha sections are telling you. We still need to save kids, however at this moment the auto-destruction sequence initiates and we need to run back to our ship. Once we're out, Beluga is being grabbed by the tractor beam of the general ship and this is another boss battle. All we need to do is to dodge laser beams and attack vital points. To disable a tractor beam we jump down with our hovercraft and proceed inside the enemy ship. We see a cutscene of General dying and we disable a beam allowing us to go back to save the children. But now a Dom's Armada appears and we need to fight them off. After some time the help from Helis arrives allowing us to get back into the Dom's base. It's time for the final boss battle. This fight has several phases. At the beginning we fight a swarm of Dom's creatures sent against us, they are quite trivial to kill though. Now we need to shoot the eye a couple times and it will hide behind the crystal barrier. The boss will spawn page illusions and we have to launch them first into the barrier and then into the boss itself. Now we are fighting on a small platform and the boss is constantly teleporting, so we have to evade its attacks and hit back as much as possible. In the final phase we need to beat some Dom's creatures and finally defeat the boss.
After the credits, we see the final scene showing that Paige is infected with Dom's spore and the game ends. And that's beyond good and evil. Now it's time for some final thoughts. In my opinion, the game is fantastic. It holds great even after 20 years and I had a great time playing it for the first time. The graphics don't really feel outdated due to the style of characters and the world. I probably have only two complaints about this game. First is that controlling Jade and Hovercraft with mouse and keyboard feel clanky, but maybe it's just me. Second problem is that sometimes the camera switches from free to a fixed angle and it may feel disorienting. Other than that, everything is just amazing. The game is not very long by any standards, it took me about 10-11 hours to finish it, with pretty much every side activity completed except for a couple animal pictures. But such length works in favor, the game keeps you engaged from start to finish and it never feels repetitive. The variety of game mechanics is mind-blowing. One moment you fight enemies and capture photos, now you're racing on your hovercraft, now a stealth section, a minigame, a puzzle, a space combat, and once again it's not repetitive. You don't need to play the same lockpicking minigame again and again to unlock another door. The game always presents you with something new. I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I've enjoyed playing this game. Please leave a comment, like and subscribe as it will help this channel to grow. And as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.